in this lecture we will introduce perhaps the most important battery technology at least as of now which is the lithium ion battery uh, a full semester course can be taught um, on the chemistry science and technology of lithium ion battery so of course we are not doing that so this is just an introduction and we will address some of the issues introduced in this lecture in the later part of the course. An important event for the electrochemical community uh, in general is the recognition of these three scientists uh, with the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 2019. This scheme brings out many features of contemporary research. Professor John Goodenough, who passed away recently, uh, got his Nobel Prize at the age of 98, and he was working, continued to work till um, he passed away. So he was a solid-state physicist by training, went on to do work in solid-state chemistry, did some very practical work. Battery is a very practical application. So that was his background. Professor Stanley Whittingham was a solid-state chemist who did this work on lithium-ion battery in Exxon Mobil Lab. So that was a company uh, which still has a great emphasis on oil. So all this work was on lithium-ion battery was done when he was at Exxon. And Professor Yoshino also did the work that gave him the Nobel Prize when he was associated with uh, a company. So it also tells you how interdisciplinary is the research um, and right now is. Okay, So it's important uh, not to demarcate something as being physics, chemistry, engineering, and so on. So all these things come together when you're addressing some important problem. So their work was on lithium-ion battery. Uh, what did they discover and optimize and so on. So this, uh, these electrodes which go into lithium-ion battery are called insertion electrodes. What is being done during the discharge of battery or the same kind of phenomena is also applicable um, during charging of a battery. So what is to be noticed is that there is an electrode structure which takes up lithium ion. So this lithium ion comes from the other electrode, passes through the electrolyte, and gets into this electrode. Uh, these are the lithium ion um, that are in the interstitial position. Okay, So uh, lithium inserts itself to the electrode. And what is to be noticed is that there is insignificant change in the electrode structure um, with lithium insertion. Insignificant is a sort of a relative term, but what is meant here is that the electrode structure does not completely collapse with the insertion of uh, lithium ion. That is the most crucial thing. Why is this important? Note, we are talking about secondary battery. Secondary batteries are those that can be charged and recharged, as opposed to primary battery, which operate only once. That is, you assemble the battery and they get discharged. That's it. You cannot recharge the uh, primary battery because the electrode structure is structural changes upon discharging is not reversible. As opposed to that, in a secondary battery, you can charge and discharge for many cycles. So if you look at a particular positive electrode, in this case, cobalt oxide, this was uh, the positive electrode uh, that John Goodenough discovered and optimized. So lithium ion from the solution inserts into cobalt oxide during discharge and forms this particular uh, compound, which is lithium cobalt oxide. This 
reaction is exothermic in nature. That is, uh, its delta G is negative, which is the reason why you get a voltage in a battery. In So, the, let's say this structure, a schematic change in structure occurs during discharge. During recharge of the battery, this reaction can be reversed. So, you, you apply an external potential uh, to change this structure to these uh, particular components. Okay, So, that is an endothermic process. So, you need to apply an external power. So, what is important to understand is during discharging and charging of the battery, okay, so it there is a cyclical change in electrode structure and the electrode structure does not completely collapse. The electrode material is does not completely collapse so that this can be done in a reversible manner. This is the crucial point. Uh -huh. um, that is to be understood. So, um, again, the emphasis here is on reversible. Okay, so this is, uh, we are using it in a relative manner. Okay, so there is a finite life cycle for a lithium-ion battery because it's not perfectly reversible, but it's uh, reversible to a great extent so that you can charge and discharge for many thousand or hundreds of cycles. That is possible. Okay, so this is the reason for um, uh, for which uh, this team was given the Nobel Prize uh, in 2019. So again, to emphasis, emphasis uh, the emphasis here is on reversible structural changes. Um, so in a way, this is an idealized representation. So the real change is not that you you completely remove all the lithium ion during charging of a battery or you completely fill lithium ion in all the positions possible during the discharge. So a more reasonable and accurate representation compared to this is that uh, this much amount of lithium um, gets into cobalt oxide um, and then forms some compound like this. So what uh, the thing to understand is that when you recharge the battery, you're not completely removing all the lithium. Okay, So typically about, let's say, 50% or um, of lithium is removed during uh, the recharging of the battery. Um, um, so why is this important? Let's understand how a conventional lithium-ion battery is assembled. A conventional lithium-ion battery is assembled in the discharge state. So uh, you take lithium cobalt oxide um, in the positive electrode and during recharging process, uh, some amount of lithium is being removed and the amount of lithium that is being removed is about half a per, uh, 50%. All right. So half of the lithium is being removed. Why is that so? So that the structural change from the charge state and the discharge state is not too significant to allow for the reversible structural changes that is required for the operation of a secondary battery. So that is, uh, so compared to this, this is a better representation of the stoichiometric changes uh, that occur during discharge and the recharge of the battery. There's another subtle point which I want to emphasize here. What exactly do we mean by a positive electrode? Okay, so a battery, irrespective of whether it's in the charge state or the discharge state, the positive electrode is an electro-neutral object. Okay, so it's more or less electro-neutral. Uh, that's a reasonably good first approximation. Okay, so even though when you refer an electrode as a positive electrode, you have to understand there is charge neutrality in the electrode. Therefore, it's a neutral object. So the reason why you take this electrode takes up an electron is because you are inserting 
a positive ion into this neutral structure. Therefore, to maintain electron neutrality, a single el electron is injected into the electrode structure. So what exactly do we mean by a positive electrode is that the positive um, uh, nomenclature is indicative of the current direction. In this case, let's say a conventional current okay, that flows from the positive electrode to the negative electrode because these nomenclatures were standardized from early um, stages of uh, electrical devices, okay, in, from 1800s. So the molecular or microscopic changes uh, were was not obvious in those times. And we have retained um, this nomenclature uh, from those times. So the main thing to understand is an electrode is always electroneutral. This positive is just indicative of current direction. Note, uh, when the electronic current is in the direction opposite to the conventional current and current flow, so by which we refer to electron flow in the wire, um, is because of gradient in chemical potential of the electrons. So here, positive is also indicative of the chemical potential of the uh, electron in the electrode. So also it is to be understood that chemical potential of the electron is controlled by chemical bonding. Okay? So, um, and it is better to not think of the chemical potential just via the electrostatic uh, potential. Okay, So just thinking about an electrostatic potential of an uh, electron to modulate the chemical potential is inadequate uh, because of the electrode electroneutrality. I'm sure you have a lot of uh, questions regarding this particular slide, we can discuss further when we meet in the class, but uh, you have to think through this slide very carefully. Okay, so what exactly we mean by electroneutrality and um, uh, so that you don't get confused by this nomenclature that is adopted in electrochemical systems. So what is the negative electrode reaction? So in um, the most conventional lithium ion battery, graphite serves as the material for negative electrode. Ab about six carbon atom take up one lithium ion. So the stoichiometry is represented in this manner. So in the recharge state, that is in the charge state, all the lithium is stored in lithium ion is stored in the graphite electrode and graphite is a two dimensional material okay so it allows for um, insertion ease facile insertion of lithium ion into the electrode structure so uh, you form a compound with this stoichiometry during discharge of the battery this lithium ion gets out of the graphite structure and um, that is transferred to the positive electrode. So during the discharge, graphite loses all the lithium ions. So this, it, that particular stoichiometry is represented as lithium zero, right? So there is no, in the completely discharged uh, battery, the graphite, that is the negative electrode of a lithium ion battery has no lithium. And then during the discharge, uh, that lithium is gets out into the solution and further this lithium ion in the solution inserts itself to the positive electrode of the battery during the discharge reaction. So if you combine this reaction with this reaction, you can write the overall reaction in an electrochemical uh, system in this case, uh, the lithium ion battery. So in a half cell reaction, you explicitly see electrons, okay? So you see an um, electron here and you see electron here. In a full cell, um, this is a full cell reaction. In a full cell reaction, 
uh, there is no explicit mention of electron okay so this is the that this reaction is an electrochemical reaction is evident by the explicit indication of an electron in either the uh, product or in the reactant site uh, but when you write a full cell which is a combination of these two uh, reaction when you write a full cell reaction electron is not explicitly uh, shown um, but you should understand that each half cell is an electrochemical reaction this is the full cell reaction in a lithium ion uh, conventional lithium ion battery so note that the lithium oxidation state is uncharged whether it is press unchanged whether it is present in the negative electrode in this case also the lithium oxidation state is plus one when it is present in the positive electrode even in that case the lithium oxidation state is plus one so the lithium oxidation state is unchanged whether it is present in the positive electrode negative electrode or the electrolyte okay so it's important to understand in the conventional lithium ion battery the there is no lithium metal that is present in the battery whether the lithium is present in anode cathode negative electrode positive electrode or in the electrolyte solution it is always in the plus one oxidation state and just to complete uh, all the components of the lithium ion battery um, what is the electrolyte in the lithium ion battery uh, typically it can be something like a lithium uh, perchlorate or some other salt that is dissolved in organic carbonates okay so this is held within a porous separator and lithium ion translocates across this electrolyte as it shuttles between the positive electrode and the negative electrode okay so this one class of electrolytes um, but the frontier research area in this um, field is to replace the liquid electrolyte by a solid state uh, electrolyte okay so this is a cutting edge research area in this um, in lithium ion battery this is considered fairly futuristic and very safe the solid state electrolyte is considered to be very safe um, uh, so one of the main disadvantage of lithium ion battery is its safety okay so we will address these issues later in the class but just to introduce um, this topic there are something called dendrites um, these are uh, pointy structures uh, which short circuits uh, one electrode um, that is that these pointy lithium um, metallic structures uh, there's a continuous structure between um, the positive and the negative uh, negative electrode it cuts across uh, the electrolyte these structures are called dendrites and it short circuits the battery and um, it it may cause uh, fires okay so the many of the liquid electrolytes are also combustible so you may have seen um, uh, lithium ion battery um, burning okay so the that's a big issue safety is a big issue in lithium ion battery despite lithium ion battery having other advantages like it have it having a very high uh, voltage and it being light uh, some of the severe disadvantage is the safety issue so this issue will be addressed later in the course so typically you want to uh, have the lithium ion battery voltage between these two values okay so why this is so again this issue will be addressed later in this course so uh, as i uh, mentioned the lithium the conventional lithium ion battery is assembled in the uh, discharge state then you charge the um, lithium ion battery and when you do that you typically try to keep the changes in the battery voltage in this window okay so why this is so we will get into 
more molecular reason um, later in this course. So what is the next topic? Um, why lithium ion battery is probably the most common secondary battery. What revolutionized secondary battery in general is a battery with a different, completely different chemistry, which is called the lead acid battery. It is not for historical reasons where we want to introduce this battery. It is lead acid battery is still a very, very significant part of battery technologies. Uh, there are um, uh, many thousands of lithium um, that is lead acid battery, which are manufactured every year and it is widely utilized. Um, and we will introduce lead acid battery in the next lecture. Thank you.